Hello everyone. Good morning, good afternoon and good evening. My name is Manish Podar. I'm the service leader for quality and resilience engineering at LTI. I'm based in Pune in India. Today I joined by our senior solution architect Deva Devanathan from Texas, who also wears the hat of being one of the product owners for LTI's modern software engineering platform called Canvas. Deva. Hi everyone. Uh, I'm Deva. Uh, solution architect uh, and also a product owner for Canvas Resilience platform. Uh, excited to be part of this interaction today uh, to discuss our platform and uh, how we are evolving our resilience engineering practice within LTI. And Manish, uh, happy to uh, have that conversation with you today in terms of how things are going on. Sure, sure. So uh, when we speak of consumer grade applications, uh, what we imagine is a superior customer experience and that to at speed. However, today's world demands this superior experience to be delivered anywhere and any time. And hence, delivering business process scalability and privacy with amplified customer as well as employee experience is critical for business viability. There is a big transition happening from building consumer grade applications to business grade applications for delivering what we call as total experience. This shift has a set of very peculiar characteristics which businesses need to deliver. Number one, high availability of business processes, followed by an ability to, uh, to resolve issues very fast, ability to respond to business needs faster and, and scale at any point from anywhere. To be able to deliver these application characteristics, at LTI, we adopt a very proactive and engineering approach that enables what we call business process reliability. Deva, what, what, what do you see uh, in this space in the market today and, and how are we aligning to our Canvas platform, the strategy for reliability? Yeah, definitely uh, the, the need for uh, building a resilient application is increasing, like uh, one being uh, getting into cloud, and uh, more of a remote working that's happening today. It's not just the consumer uh, or a customer experience now, an employee experience is also equally uh, be keen because most of your applications use, whether it is internal, external, it's, it's all uh, accessed by multiple remote distributed locations, right? And, and what we have been continuously observing uh, is uh, definitely there is a lack of synergy in the way how it is being built uh, within your development life cycle and what are the uh, characteristics that we need to have to be resilient and how it is being consumed by your end users, right? Uh, and that's where exactly uh, what uh, we are trying to solve through Canvas, uh, mainly focusing on uh, hardening your applications for hyper availability, right? Uh, hence, the focus around the business resilience uh, becomes a key part of what we are delivering. Uh, we are uh, building in three key uh, features uh, within the Canvas resilience platform. Uh, one, focusing on chaos engineering, right? As you all know, it's an art of inject injecting uh, chaotic conditions uh, to simulate and to verify uh, how resilient your applications are, right? We are building ready to use uh, kiosk injection attacks on your CPU, IO, memory, uh, simulating loads, uh, validating your post attack um, auto healing process, like uh, your scalability aspects, right? And the second one is uh, observability, right? Uh, that's been talked about uh, right now by everybody, right? Especially uh, the growing adoption of site reliability engineering. Um, um, while it is more around the operations front, uh, we are also seeing uh, how the prediction is coming uh, forward. Like we wanted to know, correlate everything and see uh, how my application is behaving now, how it will behave tomorrow and what I need to be getting ready for. Right? And the third uh, is the interesting part that we are building uh, around uh, the insights. Right? So how uh, we can have resilience by design. Uh, integrating your infrastructure and performance matrices to your SDLC uh, right. impacts. Right? Uh, we'll talk more about it as we progress to the deep into the conversation, but uh, that's that's where we are focusing on uh, how we can have resilience by design itself. Right? Uh, while we, we see that uh, the, the platforms are evolving, things are being done, mm -hmm. and I see that based on our conversation earlier, uh, there is a change in the way how our services is getting uh, adopted to it, and there is a change to the customer experience. Can you share more around that uh, to us? Sure, 
very very interesting um, you know uh, with with that as an outside in perspective um, um for services to really deliver and cater to these demands of um, the business process uh, reliability uh, uh, we are undergoing a major transformation in the way we we kind of articulate um, a non functional related services the way we articulate um, uh, inclusion of non functional requirements in the application and and build an architectures um so a a, a large portion of change that's been bringing in is to number one is to bring um, the software engineering concepts into operations um, and and th- that's a discipline which is which is uh, which is of of site reliability engineering um and what does it mean for us to you is is to change the performance to digital uh, experience uh, monitoring to business monitoring right uh, and bringing concept like chaos uh, into resonance engineering as as you mentioned deva right so this this whole change in terms of the strategy and uh, approaches to to really bring the non functional aspects of application into engineering is what is a predominant change that we are doing today right um as we speak we also are undergoing a major skill upliftment right uh, gone are the days of um, having a performance testers delivering performance testing scripts with the with with various tools in the market and 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 uh, validating for performance once the applications are well integrated um the the ask is more to 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 engineer for performance and not only performance but to the wider non functional aspects early in the life cycle through through requirements validation through through design reviews through to automated code reviews and bringing the the aspects of that so so one side we are under uh, undergoing a change of uh, our approach and methodology um, as as we transform our services the other side we are also trying to do a lot of skill upliftment program for our our talent as we as we progress and and both of these are well underpinned and pivoted to our our uh, a, a, a solid rock bed of of platform and and resilience uh, which which they were just alluding they forms a a real real strong uh, view um uh, so so they they were if, if i continue this uh, you know from a world of site reliability engineering uh, which is which is a reality today uh, what what do you think what's what's been really spoken about uh, what are you observing uh, when when you interact with clients um uh, what are general views on site reliability engineering today yeah so uh, uh, as you rightly said like it, it has been widely talked about uh, for multiple uh, reasons uh, starting with that hyper availability as a need for most of my applications right uh, so what should i do right uh, so some of them are integrating this with their own uh, devops uh, development process some are creating their own entire center of excellence we have been mm-hmm. talking to multiple clients around that uh, manish and uh, the others are still figuring out uh, what it means to them right uh, so we have been seeing an increasing uh, adoption of this as i said uh, mainly around the operations front uh, where uh, the monitoring is been strengthened some part of this observability is been uh, adopted uh, some b- best practices have been set up by the teams uh, what how they should be doing what kind of uh, uh, strategies that they need to set up when they are deploying it uh what we are trying to take out uh, through canvas is to bring in this discipline bring in this practice around it and in an automated way uh, yeah. how we can accelerate this adoptions uh, into uh, be more of a proactive rather than being uh, reactive right uh, uh, how to build your applications right uh, to especially deliver your always on capability right that's that's exactly what everybody is looking about Yeah. um um and that that's that's exactly what we are delivering like one aspect that i talked about insights uh, how we are utilizing uh, from your applications uh, from your um, uh, the infrastructure matrices mm. to derive my capacity planning right what should be the capacity for planning that i need to have for uh, to be more rea- proactive uh, than failing based on you don't have the enough capacity in your production right how can you right. do that um kind of virtualizing what is your production environment and production scenarios into your lower environment so that your testing becomes more uh, thorough around it right, right. Uh, and and uh, build your applications by design uh, to be more resilient uh, to have a continuous feedback between your dev and ops in terms of uh, what's happening with your applications right what are your hot spots within your applications that we see as we build and what we are observing within your uh, production environment in terms of behavior 
of your applications right bringing in the predictive nature uh, we are bringing uh, ml models within the canvas resilience platform right now to study uh, how the pattern of these uh, different matrices of performance are right um, and and uh, uh, as we are talking about it uh, it's the right time to uh, talk one more aspects and i see some of the questions coming up especially around it how we as an organizations are adopting uh, or implementing the site reliability engineering for our uh, clients yeah. uh, so so were, I, I, yeah I, i'll take that up right um so so essentially uh, look uh, uh, if i if i really say uh, implementation of site reliability engineering um, there are there are number of variants that we have seen in the market today right uh, variety of engagements have tried uh, setting up their their model uh, very differently right um, some of the some of the organizations have opted to make a a uh, very right aligned in the NSDLC uh, right aligned uh, mo operating model where operations team itself is kind of transformed into a site reliability engineering skills along with a very light touch support um i've also seen some of the other uh, other organizations who are doing far more left aligned approach right where where uh, the development teams have aligned more towards um, augmenting uh, uh, the sre skills and looking at uh, toil looking at automation uh, uh, very early in the life cycle looking at uh, design reviews and architectural reviews very early in the life cycle that's another approach that that we've seen um, there is there's a third set of clients or third set of organizations who have adopted a very mixed approach um, you know they have they have set up a a a, a governance body uh, which governs across the sre concepts across the across the whole of sdlc so so nutshell i would say you know there's no set standard but essentially it is more tailored approach to what an organization need uh, and and that's exactly is the philosophy that that we have been adopting to to various uh, engagements today and 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 in obviously in order to be successful to adopt such a such a variable approach uh, you know the best best starting point is to assess where the current state of the organization is from an from an application uh, it exactly. state standpoint the development methodology standpoint and obviously a readiness for for something like bringing an sre into it uh, as a response to the business needs so we we take a very very methodical approach towards assessing current state of affairs tailoring uh, their operating model based the priorities um, that they have today from business and really carve out a or or a curate a, an implementation plan i think that's that's the model that we have been adopting deva um, you know broadly a coe type of construct is also seen a very very uh, prominent uh, with a varying nature of ownership right some of the coes have taken a very heavy lifting approach of of delivering the entire sre function themselves while some of the coes have really taken an approach of very light touch governance functions while while the stlc personas deliver the the sre and and this governance team takes care of uh, you know bringing in but but by and large uh, you know either of the options of the coes there is also a concept of uh, i would say a lab that has been set up which which we have seen most of the places and and deva you might want to exp uh, say, you know share the experiences that that recently we've had setting up such uh, such lab for for some of our engagements sure sure manish uh, as uh, you are talking about the practices the governance entity there needs to be an action Uh, mm. to associated to it and that's where uh, we are setting up a, a resilience uh, a lab within the coe structure uh, where a, a platform like canvas and we we are adopting some of the other industry platforms as well which the client may have or we are integrating with something that they might already have from your application management uh, 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 performance management tools and all so setting up a lab where uh, uh, we set up an automation suite uh, the team can utilize it build from there and start democratizing some of these aspects to the respective teams so yeah. that there is a standard way of uh, how you need to start testing your applications what are the different tests from a kiosk perspective you need to have uh, to ensure that your application is resilient right within your sandbox how what kind of a test we need to do when it gets into the test environment what we need to do when we get into the model office what kind of a validations that needs to be done and uh, each teams is creating their own automation scripts to for auto healing process right uh, how we can centralize those things have a, a repository of that uh, easy to use self service model and that's what the lab is kind of uh, uh, bringing into that thing and canvas uh, resilience is playing a bigger role 
in terms of orchestrating this entire thing uh, as a, uh, a kind of a resilience workstation for them right that's that's yeah. how it is yeah. and it's it's really an exciting uh, space there i think you know yeah. uh, more and more we speak and more and more we uh, kind of uh, uh, dig deep it, it's going to evolve uh, as we speak right uh, right from making uh, app business processes available all the time uh, being sc- able to scale up at any given point in time from anywhere in the world i think it's it's really maturing it and and what 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 we see as 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 a strategy towards i think there is you know uh, it's moving towards like built in resilience into the business process Correct. it's more uh, resilience as default than really in a post facto effort um uh, from an operation standpoint and applications and business process alive we we, we in fact uh, with with resilience in place with right sre practices in place we we really foresee it's going to be more of a zero operations type of a, a situation um uh, these business processes ha- have to be more self with with self healing architectures and applications where where the whole uh, it effort itself is kind of diminishing i think there's a lot that is likely to evolve as we as we progress towards and i'm sure uh, as a product owner in in uh, uh, for for canvas resilience there i'm sure you're also carving out uh, the future in a similar direction as well right yeah, exactly in our, in our conversation it comes like okay we are not ready to have site reliability engineering to be set up like, there's no uh, readiness required here like we, right. you need to start doing somewhere we need to have a, a accelerated a way of doing things uh, there needs to be a platform and and that's where uh, exactly what we are taking to our clients as well like uh, adopt get into uh, canvas start using this as a platform we will evolve we will get uh, work along with you uh, yeah. together in terms of what works best for you the assessment that you had mentioned we will assess uh, see where we have to fit in and and we are evolving our canvas resilience platform also continuously in terms of integrating with uh, major uh, apm tools uh, so that we can uh, adopt more faster uh, and deliver uh, what is required like especially the goal is always on Uh, have the resilience by design and and give the delivery uh, of whatever is required from a team perspective sure and and uh, exciting journey deva thank you so much for coming today and uh, sharing your you. uh, views around uh, canvas resilience uh, and friends this is for the day today um, uh, overall broad view of what we cover into resilience and and a canvas uh, resilience as a as a platform introduction uh, thank you so much for joining us today uh, have a great day ahead Yeah thanks thanks now. everyone thank you bye bye